Hello everyone. Uh, in this uh, brief uh, video, we're going to do a short overview of feminist and gender theory, uh, what you're going to be examining or are examining currently for Module 13. Uh, this chapter in your text explores the theoretical basis for feminism from the perspective of three different scholars that we're going to discuss here. Um, Dorothy Smith, Patricia Hill Collins, and Ray Wynn Connell. Dorothy Smith is a central proponent of what is termed standpoint theory. What this means uh, is that, in essence, it's this. The sociological perspectives through the 60s were exclusively authored by men. They assumed that the, f the focus, their focus, on paid labor bureaucracies and so forth was what sociologists at the time termed the objective world. This, however, is not the case. This male gaze on society is but a standpoint, a male one, a dominant male one. In other words, the fact that sociologists at the time were exclusively, well, almost exclusively male, de facto excluded women's standpoints, perspectives, a consideration of their lives. Smith posits that women experience a bifurcation of consciousness, a separation or split between the world as you actually experience it and the dominant view to which you must adapt, a masculine point of view that dominates social order. The dominant perspective is embedded in the institutions and practices of that world, while the dominant group enjoys the privilege of remaining oblivious to the worldview of the other with a capital O. Men are freed from thinking uh, about the fact that they are men, according to Smith, in most of their interactions. This embeddedness is inherent in what Smith terms relations of ruling, the gender-specific rationality of the ruling apparatus, a male apparatus, with which women must contend with and interact. Smith co covers a breadth of social relations from the individual to the collective, the rational and non-rational. Please refer to pages 564 and 565 for good typology of the theoretical coverage of Dorothy Smith. Our second iconic feminist theorist, Patricia Hill Collins, expands on Smith's work. Her concept, standpoint epistemology, is defined as a viewpoint, viewpoint that what one knows is affected by the standpoint one has in society. Epistemology is how we know what we know, the study of. Um, what is validly known. For Collins, gender is not sufficient. She correctly expands the standpoint of epistemology to include all the relevant relational positions that a person occupies in what she terms a matrix of domination. A woman or man doesn't just have a gender, they have a race, a social class, position, a sexuality, a nationalism, uh, an ethnicity, um, and so forth. Depending on the context, according to Smith, an individual may be an oppressor and oppressed simultaneously. Each individual derives varying amounts of penalty and privilege, according to Smith, from the multiple systems of oppression which frame everyone's lives. Collins is the architect of an important concept of modern and critical sociology, that of intersectionality, how a person occupies these multiple systems of oppression at the same time. Um, our third theorist, Ray Wayne Connell, expands on the work of uh, the Italian critical social theorist Antonio Gramsci, who coined the term hegemony. Hegemony essentially says that the ruling class exercises power not through coercion, but through the consent of those who are ruled, through the manipulation of cultural elements. Connell uses this, he this term um, hege hegemony and applies it to masculinity hegemonic masculinity, the patterns of practices that will allow men's dominance over women to continue, and to define sexuality, appropriate gender roles, uh, behaviors, and so forth, not only at the interactional level, but at the cultural societal level too, through mass media and so forth. Okay. Um, the next, uh, uh, we'll be, I'll be discussing the next module here directly. Thank you very much.